Being in between software engineering jobs, it's really allowed me to pause and reflect about what have I actually learned? And I'm not talking about literal things like I became proficient in SQL or I picked up JavaScript, not things that can be learned in a classroom or a coding tutorial. I'm talking about actual real world experience that I can take and apply to future roles. Thank you so much to our friends over at JetBrains Academy for sponsoring the video. JetBrains Academy is a project-based learning platform that guides learners through building real-world applications one step at a time. You first choose one of the numerous tracks covering specific topics such as Java backend, Python or JavaScript for beginners, and a lot more, with new tracks continuously being added. Each track comes with several projects to pick from that range from easy to challenging difficulty. Some applications you can build are a website for your portfolio, a chatbot, or even creating a blockchain. Each project can be opened and worked on directly from a JetBrains IDE. That way you can get comfortable using the IDE's powerful features. New gaming projects have been added, including It's Raining Cubes and a first-person shooter game training field. So if you're interested in game development, this is a great place to start. At the end of your studies, you'll receive a certificate of completion that you can add to your LinkedIn profile. Still not sure if it's for you? Use my special link here to get your first month completely free. All right, number one is that we know about the bugs. Okay, let me rephrase that. We know about most of the bugs in our code. When I first started working as a dev, I thought whenever a bug was found, it would be like, you know, stop whatever you're doing, all hands on deck until we fix it. Obviously, it depends on the severity of the bug and how much functionality it's affecting. Like if it's a showstopper and something major breaks, then yeah, we do wanna fix that as soon as possible. Otherwise, we just record it, put it in our backlog and pick a time to fix it. So going back to the fact that we do know about the bugs in our code, yeah, we should, keyword should have proper exception handling that logs any error and notifies the, the dev team. Or a user has already reported the bug, which is generally not something you want. You don't want the user to be the first one that knows about the bug, but it happens. This happens a lot in the game development industry where they'll actually release code already knowing about the bugs in it. And I'm sure a lot of you gamers, uh, you guys are already aware of this. For them, it kind of just makes sense because it could take several months for them to fix a bug. It makes more sense to get the game out there, start making money, and then they can patch it up with a later release. Number two is that it's better to learn things as you go than try to learn everything beforehand. And what do I mean by that? Let's say you're working as a developer, your manager comes in and says, hey, we have this web app that's written in Angular and we want you to add a feature. But you've never worked in Angular before. So what you do is you go to one of these platforms, type in Angular and you see, okay, the first one is like 34 hours long. Okay, but I also need to learn TypeScript. So then you type in TypeScript, okay, here's another you know, 15 hours. So overall, this is gonna take you like three weeks to go through all these tutorials to learn. So what you could do is you could go to your manager and be like, hey, I need three weeks to learn this stuff before I even start. If your manager is really nice, he or she will say okay, but most likely they're gonna want something quicker than that. The good thing is that most applications only use a small subset of a framework. You don't really need to know all the ins and outs before you dive into it. My recommendation is just to take a quick crash course, just so you know the basics, the basic structure of it, and just look things up as you go. So you know, you're working on it, you run into a keyword or a concept that you don't understand, pause, go learn that concept, and come back to it. All right, number three is that code reviews are your friend. I know everyone loves to get the old LGTM or the looks good to me on their code review and get their code into production as soon as possible. But honestly, the more critique you get, the better. I like to think of it as a free tutoring session, especially if it's someone in a more senior role reviewing your code and the more code your people touches, the less likely it will be to have bugs. So, you know, you wanna make sure you do your code review, you wanna make sure your unit test pass, make sure it goes through QA, UAT if your company has that, any type of production approval that's needed. That way, if something does break in production, you don't get all the blame. You can be like, yeah, I wrote the code, but it still got through QA, it still got through these other steps through code review, so. Don't put all the blame on me. On the flip side, performing code reviews is another great way to level up your skills, whether it's a more junior developer that you're help critiquing, or if you're looking at a senior developer's code, 
uh, you might pick up something new. Number four is don't wait to take initiative. I know it's really easy to kind of sit back and wait for the work to come to you, but there are always improvements that can be made within your technical infrastructure, no matter how established it is. And, and honestly, the more established ones are the ones that have the most tech debt. And it's really on the developers to maintain and improve that. I can think of a couple of examples. The first is when I worked at Western Digital. We had so many different web applications that written in so many different front end web frameworks because there was no standardization, which was cool because you're like, oh, I want to write a new web app. I want to learn this new framework. But then now we have like eight different technologies and a new developer. If you want to make a single change, you have to learn a brand new framework. So another developer and I, we had started using Vue.js. We really liked it. So we put together a little presentation. We showed it to our manager and our team, and they were totally on board to have any type of new development work done using Vue. Another example was at my last job where we used a ton of SQL stored procedures for pretty much everything, all our backend processes, all the requests that would come in from our front end applications would trigger some kind of SP. The problem is there aren't that many unit testing frameworks for SQL, especially for us, we were using T SQL T. So I kind of took the initiative upon myself and I found a framework called T SQL T. I looked into it, saw that this could actually be something really useful for us, pitched it to our lead developer and our manager, and they actually really liked it. Unfortunately, we never implemented it within our code, but hey, it's the thought that counts. Finally, we have no one starts out knowing everything. When I first started, the senior developers seemed like they knew it all. And it felt like I was never going to get to that level. But the truth is, they all started out exactly where I was. Of course, if you've been working in a code base for years, or you might have even been the one to write it, you're going to know the ins and outs of it. You're going to know all the weird edge cases. You're going to know what all the cryptic error messages mean. So you'll get there eventually, don't get deterred. I get a lot of messages from people that are learning to code and they're like, yeah, I'm trying to learn Java or Python and it, it, just, it just doesn't seem like it's clicking. And I'm like, okay, so how long have you been trying to learn? They're like, yeah, about a month. Well, yeah, it's gonna take longer than that. It's just like any other skill, right? You gotta be patient and it takes two things, repetition and time. So just stick with it. Rome wasn't built in one day and you'll get there eventually. All right, so those are five things. And you know what? Since I'm feeling a little generous, I'm gonna give you guys one for free. And that is, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay if you break something. It's inevitable, almost expected. It's not the end of the world. I don't know a developer that hasn't broken production at least once, except me, obviously. It's impossible to account for every bug. That's why bugs happen. But the important thing is to understand why it happened and to make sure you don't make the same mistake twice. So there you have it. That's five, technically six things I've learned working as a software engineer for almost five years now. I'm sure there are more things, but these are just the first ones that popped in my head. So if you guys got value out of the video, make sure you smash the like button. If you don't wanna smash it, gently tap it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and keep on coding.